Hello everyone, welcome to Storytime with the Princess. My name is Pirate Pearl and I figured that I would be continuing the story of Peter Pan where my friend Wendy left off. So we're going to be reading from Disney's all-time favorite classics and of course the story we're reading is Peter Pan. So we just left off where Peter bravely rescued Tiger Lily and her people let the lost boys go. Meanwhile, Smee had managed to pry Hook loose from the jaws of the crocodile and rowed him back to the ship with the crocodile snapping behind them all the way. That terrible ordeal had exhausted Hook. He was seriously considering giving up on getting even with Peter Pan. He would go back to his normal life, scuttling ships and cutting throats. But then Smee told him about the rumor that was going around. Tinkerbell was jealous of Wendy. She had tried to kill her and Peter had ended up banishing the little pixie. That's it, Smee, Hook shouted. Quickly, he dispatched Smee to find Tinkerbell. Smee found her sitting dejectedly on a branch. He scooped her into his cap. Begging your pardon, Miss Bell, but Captain Wook Hook would like a word with you. Hook was devious. He told Tinkerbell that he had admitted defeat and was leaving the island for good. He wanted Peter to know that he bore him no ill will, although he did think bringing Wendy to the island had been a mistake. Rumor has it that already she has come between you and Peter, Hook said slyly. Tinkerbell burst into tears, and Hook pretended to be sympathetic. Then, as if he had just thought of the idea, he offered a solution to her. We'll Shanghai Wendy. Now, if only we knew where Peter lived. Tinkerbell agreed to show Hook the location on the map if, she, if he promised not to lay a finger or a hook on Peter Pan. Captain Hook gave her his work, and Tinkerbell traced the path to Peter's hideout on a map. Hook thanked Tinkerbell, then trapped her inside a lantern. Meanwhile, Wendy and the boys had returned to Peter's hideout. Michael, take off that paint and get ready for bed, Wendy said. We're going home in the morning. Oh, Wendy, we don't want to go home, Michael whined. Let's stop pretending and be practical. You need a mother. We all do. But the boys seemed to have forgotten what a mother was. Wendy had to remind them. A mother is the most wonderful person in the world, she began. By the time she had finished, John and Michael longed to go home. Even the last boys, who had not seen their mothers in a very long time, felt sad and wanted to go home too. So they all decided to leave Neverland that very night. Peter Pan was the only one who warned, wanted to stay in Neverland. Go back and grow up, he told the others. But I'm warning you. Once you're grown up, you can never come back. As the boys marched out the door, Wendy stayed behind for a moment. She wanted to say goodbye to Peter, but he just turned his back on her. As soon as Wendy stepped out of the tree, she saw that her brothers and the lost boys had been captured by pirates. She had no time to react and was carried away. And now Smee, to take care of Master Peter Pan, Hook said as he placed a gift-wrapped box in front of Peter's door. Then he rang the bell. Wouldn't it be more human-like to slit his throat? Smee asked. But Hook had given his word to Tinkerbell not to lay a finger on Peter Pan, or a hook for that matter, and Captain Hook never breaks a promise. But on that ship, Captain Hook gave the boys a simple choice. They could sign on as members of the pirate gang, or they could walk the plank. The boys were all about to sign when Wendy stopped them. Peter Pan will save us, she said. I don't believe you are in on our little joke, Hook said. A sort of surprise package, you might say. The package he had left at Peter's door contained a bomb, Hook explained, and it was set to go off within the next few seconds. Tinkerbell overheard the conversation. She struggled desperately and finally returned, uh, overturned the lantern, shattering the glass. Quickly, she flew up to warn Peter. Peter had found the package and read the note on it. To Peter, with love, from Wendy. Do not open until six o'clock. The clock on the wall of his underground home said twelve seconds to six, but Peter couldn't wait any longer. He was untying the ribbon when Tinkerbell flew in. Hi, Tink. Look where Wendy left, said Peter. The pink pixie tugged at the package, trying to get it away from him. Hey, stop that. What's the matter with you? Peter cried. Tinkerbell jingled furiously. Hook, a bomb? Don't be ridiculous, Peter said. Then he noticed the smoke coming out of the package. Kaboom! The force of the explosion rocked the ship in the harbor. Hook removed his hat and bowed his head for a moment. So passeth a worthy opponent. Then he turned to Wendy. Which will it be? The pen? 
or the plank. We will never join your crew, Wendy replied. As you wish, said Hook. The lady is first, my dear. Wendy said, goodbye, boys, and she walked off the edge of the plank. The pirates waited to hear the splash Wendy would make as she hit the water. It never came. A pirate looked over the side. Not a blooming ripple. It's a jinx, that's what it is. It wasn't a jinx. It was Peter Pan. He had arrived just in time to save Wendy. They listened to the pirates' conversation from their perch on the anchor chain. Then Peter flew Wendy to the safety of the crow's nest and turned towards the pirates. He had business to conduct with Captain Hook. Meanwhile, Captain Hook was yelling at the pirates. You want a splash? I'll give you a splash. Who's next? You're next, Hook, Peter said. Say your prayers. Hook was furious that Peter had escaped the bomb. He lunged at Peter with his sword, but Peter darted and dodged so quickly that the captain got his hook stuck in the mast. While he struggled free, Peter had time to untie all the boys, and they joined the battle. Down, you blackguard! John yelled, whacking a pirate with his uh, umbrella. Peter Pan and Hook fought along the mast. Every time Hook got close, Peter Pan would fly away. You wouldn't dare fight old Hook man to man, the captain taunted. You'd fly away like a cowardly sparrow. Peter Pan hated to be called a coward. He gave his word he would fight without flying. No, Peter, it's a trick, Wendy said. Peter ignored Wendy's warning and fought on. Uh, and fought on. Hook backed him to the end of a yarder, and Peter nearly fell off. Wendy couldn't stand by to watch. She covered her eyes. Below, the crocodile waited patiently. Then Peter grabbed the skull and crossbones flag and tangled Hook in it. Now the pirate was at his mercy. Kill him, the voice shouted. Hook grovelled. I'll go away forever. Do anything you ask. All right, Peter said. You'll say you're a codfish. I'm a codfish, Hook said. So Peter took Hook, and he was free to go. Then, as soon as Peter turned his back, Hook raised his arm to strike him with his hook. He missed and lost his balance. The crocodile he was ready for him. Hooray for Captain Peter, the lost boys shouted. Peter strutted across the deck like a captain. All right, you swabs, we're casting off. Heave those halyards. The boys scrambled back into the rigging. But Peter, Wendy said, oh, that is Captain Pan. Uh, could you tell me, sir, where is it we're sailing? Well, to London, madam. Michael John, we're going home, Wendy cried joyfully. While the last boys raised the anchor, Peter called to Tinkerbell. Pixie dust, he ordered. Tinkerbell saluted and sprinkled pixie dust all over the deck and rails. The pirate ship began to glow. Then it rose slowly from the water until Neverland was far below. When Mr. and Mrs. Darling got home, they were puzzled to find Wendy asleep on the window seat. Oh, mother, we're back. Then she said, uh, uh, all except the lost boys. They weren't quite ready yet to grow up. That's why they went back to Neverland. But I am, she blurted out. Her parents were completely confused. Uh, am? Her father said. Ready to grow up, Wendy explained. She told them all about Peter Pan and Tinkerbell and the mermaids and being saved by Peter and calling Captain Hook a codfish until Mr. Darling concluded that perhaps she wasn't ready to grow up after all. Perhaps we were a bit hasty, he said as he turned to leave the room. I'm going to bed. He really is wonderful, isn't he, Wendy said as she looked at the window. See how well he sails the ship. Mrs. Darling glanced into the direction of Wendy's gaze. Then she called for her husband to take a look. Mr. Darling stared at the ship for quite a long time. Finally, you know, I have the strangest feeling that I've seen that ship before, a long time ago, when I was very young. <laughs> the end.